Hey guys, Ben back again this week with another Sunday School lesson. Uh, today we're going to talk about the fine print. Um, have you ever signed something that had like long list of terms and conditions? I know I do it all the time whenever I download a new app or there's an update on my computer. There are like pages and pages and pages of terms and conditions. And I just scroll and scroll. Sometimes I just let it run free. And then when it gets to the bottom, I click, I agree. And I have no idea what I agree to. They could sneak something in there easily. You know, everything you make from here until the day you die gets paid to Bill Fryer, the writer of the terms and conditions. I don't know. But luckily, I think I am okay so far. I don't know if you guys have ever done that. Um, but I learned this week about a cool real-life story about someone who got bitten by doing that. Uh, it's actually called The World's Littlest Skyscraper. If you Google it, you can find out a lot more than what I'm going to say here. But basically, it's in Texas. Uh, it's in Wichita Falls, Texas. And uh, it's back in the 19, early 1900s. They had just discovered an oil well there. And so people started moving to that area, to Wichita Falls, to, to capitalize on land and to get some oil and to, to, to make it rich. And uh, what this con man did is he moved to that area as well. And uh, he wanted to capitalize on the 20,000 people that were moving to that area and said, guys, you need a skyscraper. You need to put in one of those, you know, touch the sky for all the businesses and businessmen and women that are going to be moving to this area. And so he did up some blueprints and gave them to investors. And the investors were like, oh, this looks amazing. Um, scaled, you know, to 480 feet tall, which would have been one of the highest, I think the highest uh, in the area. Um, anyway, he collected $200,000 in those days, which uh, according to this article is about $2.9 million in today's terms uh, from all these people. And then he built a building that was not 480 feet tall. It was actually 480 inches tall. It was super tiny. And when the investors figured it out, they had already paid him. And then it says uh, they went to sue him for the money back. But his successful defense in the lawsuit was that the legal documents listed the height as 480 inches, which is these two little hash marks, like a quote, uh, as opposed to 480 feet, which is just one little hash mark, uh, like an apostrophe. And they simply didn't pick that up. He never said it verbally. He just put it in the documents. And so everything was teeny tiny. Nothing would fit uh, a real uh, human being's elevator, for example, that would hold people. It just wasn't big enough. And the stairwells were so teeny tiny that no one could actually get up them. Um, so let's see, what else does it say? Uh, so they brought a lawsuit. Uh, they recovered a small portion from the elevator company. The elevator company refused to install an elevator because it was so small. And listen to this. There was no stairway installed when the building was actually built. It actually got built. Bricks and mortar and everything. It got built at that scale. Um, so there was no stairway. They just put a ladder, <laughs> a ladder up the middle so people could actually get to the floors. Um, it's a really funny uh, story about someone not reading the fine print and really regretting it later. Uh, anyway, what's this got to do with Sunday school? Well, actually has a lot to do with Sunday school and uh, Satan and, and what he, the lies that he tells us all the time. The first time that we see an example in the Bible of somebody not reading the fine print, and I'm pretty much going to focus on this story, um, is Adam and Eve. It's uh, a story as old as time. And uh, we see Satan deceive Eve with the fine print, and what he leaves out. And so I'm going to read for you Genesis 3, and then talk to you about the fine print and, and what Eve uh, should have read and should have known. So here we go. Uh, Genesis chapter 3, it will start in verse 2. Uh, the woman said to the serpent, we may, eat from, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that's in the middle of the garden. You must not touch it or you will die. Now she is right on. She is reading the title of the book, Don't Touch It or You Will Die, and God did say that. She is correct. Now here's where Satan comes in. He's like the con man in our world's littlest skyscraper story. He says this, verse 4, You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, here it is, knowing good and evil. 
And so he sort of phrases it as something good. He says to Eve, um, oh, well, pff, you're not going to die. God just knows that once you eat it, you'll know good and evil just like him. And he doesn't want anyone being like him. So that was what he sold Eve. And here it is, verse 6. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good, she then heard that, created a little bit of doubt, looked at the fruit. And she's like, it looks so pretty. I just want it in my mouth, the fruit. <laughs> and I will know good and evil, which is good, because this guy said it was good. Um, so it says, uh, it was desirable for gaining wisdom. She took and ate it. And right at the end of verse 6, it says she gave some to her husband, who, by the way, was apparently nearby, standing there, heard what was going on, and also didn't read the fine print. He ate it. Now, what's the fine print I'm talking about? Well, in this case, guys, one huge fine print is knowing good and evil. It, it might seem good on the surface, as in like, oh, good, I know what right from wrong is. But the problem is they didn't really know evil at the time. So even though to us it sounds like, oh yeah, of course, you'd want to know what good and evil is, coming with the knowledge of evil was evil itself. And in order to understand uh, what murder was, you would have to see murder, and people would have to be murdered. And then you'd say, oh, that's evil. Um, and with evil came death. And so before they bit that fruit, there wasn't death, and there wasn't cancer, there wasn't decay, there wasn't lying and deceiving and murder and disrespect and greed and jealousy. Uh, the knowledge of good and evil only comes when you have perspective uh, of evil. And in that is what Satan was saying, uh, you will know good and evil. And Eve and unfortunately Adam and all of us, we bite that apple all the time. We fall for Satan's little tricks. We bite the apple. Uh, other examples, guys, of when we don't read the fine print is um, you know, you get a job fresh out of college. You can make $80,000 a year. And you roll that number out and you go, yeah, I really like the sound of that. Imagine how much money that is per week. But the fine print is that you're going to have to sacrifice your morals, maybe. You might have to sacrifice time with your husband or wife or kids. Your integrity could be on the line. Your relationship with the Lord could be on the line. I'm not saying it does if you all, if you get a job that's high paying, but I'm saying sometimes there's fine print in there. You can make that much money, but you have to sacrifice something. And that fine print often is dirty. If you don't know it and your eyes aren't wide open, you regret it later. You look back and you go, oh my gosh, I have the world's littlest skyscraper. I got the money I wanted, but I lost the life and the people that I want even more than that. Um, other examples of fine print could be where you go to college. You might make the decision because your boyfriend or girlfriend goes there. Um, and that's not a great idea, uh, FYI, because there's fine print. There's subjects to study, and there's campuses, there's proximity to your parents, and there's costs and all these other things. Um, being cool. I think on the surface, a lot of you hearing this Sunday school lesson right now might say, oh, I like being cool. That would be nice to be cool. Sometimes the fine print isn't pretty. It involves moral compromise. It involves uh, greed and jealousy. It involves putting other people down on social media sometimes. Um, so the fine print, you guys, is really so important. And that's where Satan loves to live, in the fine print. He often deceives on the surface. It sounds good, but then when you bite that apple, it is so, so bitter. So guys, my challenge to you this week is Look for fine print areas. Look for areas where you might be deceived. Um, is it in that popularity category? Is it in what you hope and dream for? Is Satan deceiving you uh, and re reorganizing your priorities? Just be careful of that. Is it in how you treat other people? Is it in your social media account? Is it in where you go on your social media? Is he deceiving you with, oh, look at this. You'll love it. And then in the end, you really don't love it. Um, so look for the fine print, you guys, and make sure you don't sign anything. That's the old adage is don't sign anything until you consult a, a lawyer or your parents or your accountability partner or me or Pastor Paul. And the idea is everybody is human. Sometimes we do bite little apples and sometimes we don't read the fine print and we get in trouble. But the key is 
don't marry those things. Don't keep doing that. Uh, tell somebody. Talk to somebody. And say, oh, I think I signed the contract for the world's littlest skyscraper. I didn't read the fine print. Help. And that's the way out, you guys. Before you build that teeny tiny skyscraper with no elevator and tiny little stairwell with a ladder going up it, um, tell somebody. Help them deconstruct. Help them help you deconstruct this contract that you may have signed. It's always, uh, it's never, sorry, too late to be forgiven, for your situation to be redeemed, and for God to do a work in you and through you. So trust him if you have done that sort of mistake. Guys, I hope that's encouraged you this week. Look out for the fine print this week. Don't sign it until you talk to God, talk to your parents, talk to me, and uh, be careful for what you commit to. Miss you guys. Hope to see you soon and make some more of these pictures behind you. God bless. See ya.